Hi, good morning guys, thanks for joining me. Hope everybody's well, hope everyone's enjoyed the Easter breaks. I was working myself unfortunately, so it's nice now just to get out today, get a little bit of R&R, &R, and certainly with the weather like it is, it's absolutely stunning. So what I thought we'd do in today's video is talk about these little sleeves. I've had a few inquiries about these, I think I showed them on the fire kit video. And the idea behind them basically is just to keep the noise down when they're in the fire kit, just stop things from clanking around. And the other idea behind it is a visual aid, if it was that you dropped your fire kit or you dropped your ferro rod on the ground, it's just going to make it a lot easier to see and just the black ferro rod on its own. So they can be made any size, this one was for the half inch rod, I made them for a 3 8 and I've also made one here for an X attack. Again, with that being a green rod, it just makes it just a little bit more easy to see, just in the sleeve there, if it was to be dropped on the ground. Like I say, very simple to make, just a single piece of leather, just a single stitch. If you're just starting off in leather work, you don't need many tools. That's something we're just going to run through now, show you how to make them, and anyone that's interested can get them made for themselves. So just before we get into the nitty gritty and make one of these sleeves, the first thing I'd like to do is just run through the tools which I'm going to use. And again, like the last leather video which I did, you don't need this amount of tools to actually make one. It just makes the job just a little bit easier and makes the end result just a little bit neater. So just as long as you've got some way of cutting the leather, I've just got a little cheap craft knife here or a box knife. These are quite handy. Just replace the blades like the old Stanley knives. It then means you've always got a sharp blade because when it comes to cutting through this leather, it can be quite tough. Some way of just measuring just a couple of steel rules, again nothing fancy and then when it comes to sticking the leather just a little bottle there of leather craft cement it's just a PVA glue, it works quite well on this kind of leather a couple of needles for sewing it, like we say we're going to use a saddle stitch so with the saddle stitch we will use two needles and also just in the back here they have got a little stitch pony when it comes to making awls you can either use your awl or you can use the prick irons I've just brought a little set of prick irons out with me today just to make the job just a little bit quicker and then when it comes to marking the line which we're going to stitch in the last video we used a little groovy but for this one here we're going to use these little wing dividers this is just going to make a line in the leather instead of actually grooving the leather and then just a few bits and bobs here just a hammer just to knock just little prick irons through a little cutting board and then the thread which we're going to use as this orange thread here, I do find it makes a nice contrast against the orange leather. So again, you know, this choice is down to yourself, but for me, this is what we're going to use today. So the choice of leather for today's project, like I say, is this orange leather here, and this is a piece of 1mm smooth cowhide. A nice supple leather, it does sew easy, it does cut easy, so again, if you are new and starting off with leather work, this kind of leather is perfect for it. One disadvantage with these kind of leathers, it is a chrome tan unlike the veg tan which we're used to, so things like the sheaths these are usually made out of a veg tan leather it does take quite a long time to produce veg tan, it takes around about three months unlike this kind of leathery which takes a couple of weeks so this kind of leather is a lot cheaper but unfortunately it doesn't last as long so again for knife sheaths and all that kind of stuff I do prefer the sturdier, thicker veg tan leathers but like I've seen for this little project this is going to be perfect so when it comes to cutting it and measuring it, it's just a case of measuring it just with your ferro rod and all I like to do is just roll it around, just making sure there that you've got enough leather to overlap to stick down and sew. There's quite a bit of excess there which we can trim down. And then just getting a marker or a pencil or anything like that. Just going to mark, just a little mark there. And that's just what we're going to cut against. But before we cut it, I'm just going to measure just in from one end there. That's 64 mil, and then just repeating the, the process on the other side, just to make sure, just in case when we rolled it over it wasn't quite even. And then just using the bigger rule here now, we're just going to cut, cut down. And the beauty about these boards, you can just line the edges up, just with the lines on the board, just to make sure that you're cutting everything nice and square. And then we're just going to, one move all the way down. Actually, I'll add the cut off nice and squarely, and then just using the rod again, I'm just going to cut down this excess here, just making sure again that we've got enough to stick, and also sew, just making sure that that is nice and square. And actually, I'll add the cut out, and what we're just going to do, we're just going to warm a little bit of water up, and I'm just going to dip it in, just to make it so that when it moulds it will hold its shape just a little bit, it's not anything like veg tan you know, it doesn't hold a definite shape but it will make things just a little bit easier and also just makes that form shape there pretty much stay like that at all time so it's easier just to slip the rod in and out as and when you need it Once 
once you've got your water nice and warm it's just a case of just dipping the leather in it doesn't need a, a great deal of time it does soak in quite easily like i say the more water that you put in the more you've got to get out anyway and the longer it's going to take to dry but what that's done now that's made that really really supple it's gone like a little piece of paper now it's just a case of just getting your rod just centralizing everything up and just folding it together like so and just holding it just in shape for a few seconds and then once you're happy there and everything's centralized and it's starting to get that shape just grab yourself just a couple of these small little clamps they work quite well and then i've just got just a couple a little bits of scrap leather which we're just going to fold over the top just to stop the clamps from marking the leather i'm just going to hold that as close to the rod as possible i've just got three of them which should be enough put that down to one side now and just let that dry Once you're happy that the leather's dry, you can remove the little clamps and that now is holding some kind of shape. Like I said, it's not perfect, it's not like using veg tan. That's just going to allow the rod just to slip in just a little bit easier. So all you've got to do now is run a bead of glue just along the edge and just along the front there. And with that I'm just going to use just this little bit of a spreader which I've made. Just there, like I said, just a touch along the front and now just being careful we're just going to roll it over just so that the two edges meet and if there's any bits of excess just squirting out you can just rub them off And again, I'm just going to leave that for a few minutes and just let the glue dry. Once you're happy that the glue's dried, it's just a case now of just putting the feather rod in, just check that the size is right. Just being careful that we don't split the, the seam. And as you can see there, that fits quite well. If you wanted to, you could call that done. If you wanted to use a stronger contact glue, you know, there's more chance of that holding than what there's a PVA glue. But we're just going to run a stitch around it just to finish things off, just to make things more secure and just make things just a little bit neater. So for that, we're just going to use the wing dividers. This is going to mark a line for us. So we're just going to open them up. Pretty much just determine how far we want the stitching just away from the edge. I'm just going to come in around about four to five mil. And then once you're happy there, it's just a case of just running it just up the leather. And all it's doing is making just a very shallow crease, which is going to be the stitch line, which we're going to follow with the pricking irons. So we've got them nice two straight lines. And then just following the line as straight as we can. like so and then with a couple of taps we're just going to knock the holes all the way through and I'm just going to run that all the way down
And then when you're done, if the camera can pick that up there, you'll see a little series of holes running up the top and just along the front. And obviously they're the holes which are going to follow now when it comes to the stitching. So when it comes to the stitching, like I said, we're going to use two needles. The thread we're going to use is the orange thread. I'll just show you quickly just how to thread them through, just so that they don't come off the needles. So the length that we want is around about four times the length of what the stitch is. There's one, two, three, four. And then if you want to make sure, I always just give it just an extra one. And then we can cut that off. And when you cut it, if you make it at a 45 degree angle, it's just going to go through just the eye of the needle, just a little bit easier. And the same just on this other side here. Just like that. And hopefully the camera will stay in focus, but once you've threaded the thread just through the eye of the needle, I just like to get the little tag end like so, and then just push the needle back up through the centre and pull it back through. And then if you pull that up, that then just forms a little knot that stops it from coming off the thread. So just repeating it just on the other side here, just through the eye of the needle. that up through the centre of the tag end and then pulling it back down and then pulling it I'll tie that into a nice little knot so there you've got two needles just on a single thread which are locked in and aren't going to come off one new addition to the kit which we recently had is this little stitch pony here absolutely awesome piece of kit and the idea behind it is you put your work just in the top there and it means both hands are free for when it comes to the sewing so now it means i can be able to do the saddle stitch without having to hold the piece of work in between my knees it's going to make the job a lot more comfortable and a lot more secure and these kind of things you can pick up from ebay or amazon around about 10 or 15 pound if you wanted to you know quite easy to make all i've actually done is just glued just a little piece of leather there just on the top of the jaws and then when it comes to fastening the work you just pop it just in as high as you want it and then we're just going to screw up just the wing nut here and that closes everything together secures the jaws and stops that work from falling out and then when it comes to using it just tend to just sit down like so and then everything's at the perfect height like I was saying when it comes for the sewing so when you start off with the saddle stitch, you've just got to figure out where it is that you're finishing off. And I'm going to finish off up at the top end there, the nearest place to where you put the ferro rod in. So just popping just the right hand needle just through. Then you just lift up and find the centre of your thread. And then just starting off with the right needle, just pop it through the hole. And then the second needle just goes behind, pull through, lift the thread up. And then with the hole there, just push the other needle through. Drop the thread over the top and pull them both securely. And there's the first stitch done. I'm just going to bring the camera just a little bit closer to see if you can see what's going on. And I'll try to do a few of these stitches just a little bit slower. So just through the hole, put the other needle just at the back, pull through, just open the hole up just a little bit. And the secret behind it, or the thing that you try not to do, is actually pierce the thread. Just while you're putting that second needle through, else when you pull it, it won't pull all the way through and everything's all knotted up. And then once you've got it through, just pull both of them evenly. Like I say, just close that stitch up and then pull nice and securely. So just through a needle at the back.
And then once you've finished and you've come back up to the top, we're just going to run just a few stitches back down, which is just going to secure just the stitching just at the top here. And to do that, we're just going to reverse the process. So originally we went through with the right needle just to start off with. So this time we're just going to go through with the left needle. This part is a little bit tricky, just making sure that you don't pierce any of the threads that you've already done. And instead of holding the needle at the back like we did originally, we're going to hold the needle at the front. We're going to pull that through. Again, just doing the same. We're going to hold the thread up out of the way. We're just going to put that through and then draw that needle back through the little loop, just which is situated there. And as we pull that tight then, it's just going to double up on that thread and then we're just going to come down just one more time. Do exactly the same kind of thing. And this now has doubled the thread up up the top here for us. And then the way that we want to finish off is just to make sure that both threads are on the same side of the piece of work. And this is the front here, this is the back. So I'm just going to push it through just so that the thread just finishes up on the back side. Just like so and that's your finished piece of work there so we're just going to snip that off now and just mount the ends an easiest way just to trim just the ends off is with a little pair of snips you can just get nice and close And then with this being a synthetic thread, we can just dab that down just with a cigarette lighter. Just making sure that we don't melt too much of the thread. And that's the stitching done and that's the little sleeve nice and secure. And as you can see there, the stitching doesn't look too bad. Nice and neat, nice and secure. Just doubled up at the top there just to stop things from opening up just under the pressure of the ferro rod and the beauty about that uh, saddle stitch is the fact that you can finish it off and there's no visible knots. So if you wanted to, you can put a bit of track on that, just burnish the edges down. If you wanted to, you can just round just the corners down just to stop them from catching in your pocket or your fire kit. Or if you wanted to, you could call that done. And after around about 10 or 15 minutes, there's the finished little project. I've just put some trag just on the edges there, just burnished it and just rounded the edges down just so it fits in the pocket or in the fire kit just a little bit easier. And like I was saying, once you've wet moulded it, it does retain its shape, you know, not too bad. You can actually compress it and it will actually come back out a little bit. So just popping just the rod in there just to check everything. Actually quite happy with the stitching and that's the beauty about these kind of things, it's all practice if you've got little bits of scrap weather knocking about, you know, these are perfect for it and also if I do drop the ferro rod on the ground it's a nice visual aid for when it comes to finding it. That's better, get myself from out of that shade, absolutely glorious out today. Just going to make myself a quick cup of tea, a little bit of lunch and have an explore around the woods for the next few hours. So like always, you just leave me to say thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the video, like always. Until next time, you take care and I'll see you again.